How do we draw a complex scene such as this freehand in pen? Well, it looks pretty complex and particularly using ink to try and draw it. But I think there is a way and it involves a lot of lines, but it's a lot of fun as well and very satisfying. And the key thing is to always keep the overall picture in mind, the overall goal in mind. And when we see a scene that's as complex as this, we need to ask ourselves before we start to draw, what am I trying to bring out? What do I want to capture from how I draw this? Because otherwise we can get overwhelmed with all the detail if we have no direction. And for me, when I looked at this, I really wanted to draw the scene because of the people who are walking in it and because of the beautiful memory of my only ever walk in a Swiss forest on the outskirts of Bern. And it's such different natural surroundings to what I have here in Australia. So I was really keen to try the techniques that I've been using lately for the Australian bush on a Swiss forest as well. I liked the dark framing on each side of the pathway that we have with the fir trees and the shadow across the front. But the sheer complexity of what's beyond that was a bit daunting for me. However, I started with the figures because, well, if I didn't get them right, <laughs> there was no point doing an hour's work on the trees. And this took me about an hour in real time to draw, maybe an hour and a quarter. I use a 0.5 millimeter pen, a 0.3, a 0.2, and a 0.1. And they're all, they're all Copic multi-liners. So at this point, having done the figures and decided that they looked human enough for me to put the time in to draw in the forest around them, I'm using a 0.1, I think, just, just positioning these framing trees. Now, you'll notice I'm not doing long straight lines because there are things that come across in front of these trees, some of the, the um, not leaves, uh, needles. And so I want to make sure that I can put my lines for those in front of the lines for the trunks. So again, this is where a few minutes observation to just get our head around what exactly we're drawing, even when all the values are relatively dark to still perceive what the actual positioning of various elements are. What things really are the closest and what things are behind those things. And I wanted to make sure that I kept the pathway nice and tight in terms of its bend and its foreshortening and not letting it creep up too high. So now I switch to a 0.5 millimeter pen and I need to block in the values, the darknesses for these framing trees. Now there's going to be a lot of lines on this at the end. I do know that, particularly in these darker sections. So at this point, I'm really trying to get maximum darkness on my paper as quickly as possible. But I don't want to put any lines though that aren't going to work in with the lines I'm going to put over the top. But by using a heavier pen, and a, a 0 0.5 is the heaviest I have drawn with, it lets me get quite a bit of effect fairly quickly. And because I want to go dark overall, by going dark at this stage, it helps push me further on. But I will tell you, I thought I'd finished and then I came back and did another 10 minutes on it after I'd pulled the tape off and turned the camera off. But I did put the camera back on. So wait till the very end and you'll see an extra probably three minutes of video where I think the extra that I did has made a huge difference in achieving the effect that I wanted at the start. Sometimes we have to just let a drawing rest even just for 5, 10, 15 minutes and then we can just see it with fresh eyes. But what I'm wanting to do is to have this, this darker framing and then have a sense of these figures walking off. But I also wanted a strong sense of light coming through from the farthest section 
coming back towards us. And if this is helpful, then why not hit the like button and help me? That sped things up a bit. Sorry about that. I turned the camera off so that I didn't have too long a section of video to then have to edit and deal with. And of course, forgot to turn it back on. Fortunately, I glanced at my camera, but I think what I'm doing here is fairly straightforward. I'm drawing the branches of the fir trees that are closest to us. And I'm taking particular care with these because these give us the silhouettes that I hope will make it easy to see, oh, this is a fir forest. We're, we're in some sort of alpine region at least with these. And so capturing not just the, the, the shape of the needles, but the shapes of the branches so that we give as much information visually as quickly as possible to anyone looking at our drawing is important. And I'm still going dark with my 0.5 millimeter pen. And now I decide to keep going with some of these darker areas and to map in, block in some more line work to create some darker value in this foreground section. So it's still using the 0 0.5, but I'm using it very much at an angle so that I can get a much lighter line. It's not quite as easy to control the lightness of the line in terms of making it even, but these are very quick gestural lines I'm doing for my initial shadows over the pathway. So I don't mind about that. You'll notice that I've made a point of curving those lines to give a sense of the slight curvature on the pathway, but then I also added some flat lines as well just to give a little bit of tension in the center part so it didn't look like it was too much of a hump down the middle. But really it's particularly at the edges where the pathway goes into the grass that I want a sense of the surface sloping into the grass on each side. And I'm also having to work my lines here now. Notice what I'm doing. I've done some vertical lines to reflect the shadows in the grass and or whatever plants are there. But then I'm also doing some diagonal sloping lines to firstly and mainly to create value to start creating darkness here, but also to reflect the general slope of the ground as it slopes up slightly from the pathway. If not the ground, at least the surface that we're seeing of the vegetation. And so I'm really doing two lines here or two directions. I'm doing the, the straight up and down lines to strongly reflect the, the vegetation. But I'm also doing these diagonal lines to reflect the, the surface of this section. And I think that worked quite well because I really did need to get this fairly dark. And I do, I do come back to everything I've done at this point later in the drawing and make it darker and darker again. The thing with values is that we can't really judge them accurately on their own. And particularly at an early stage, when we don't have the rest of the drawing in place, how dark do these darks have to be? It depends on the relative darkness. We need them to be in relation to the other parts of lighter sections. And when we haven't drawn those other parts, it is hard to know. So there is a sense where we go in dark in the darkest areas, but hold back a little bit so that we can then do the fine tuning towards the end. Although, as it turned out, my fine tuning that I had an extra 10 minutes doing or eight minutes doing at the very end wasn't in this section. It wasn't in the framing fir trees. Now, you'll see, again, doing these further back tree trunks, I certainly don't draw long straight lines because that's not going to be helpful for the effect I want, where I want to have the effect of, of lots of branches of, of needles coming in front reflecting the light, of course, whereas the trunks are darker. So what I want to have is some broken fragments of tree trunk that are all stacked on top of each other in the shape of a tree trunk at the, at the lean of the tree, but where there are gaps where lighter values can come across the front 
and line work to indicate the crisscrossing of all the branches in this forest. Now there is some sort of dark shrub straight ahead which is very helpful because it lets me use that to define the figures a little more clearly. Now I don't want the figures to look like they're floating, that they're so clear and distinct, but I don't want them to get lost in the background either. And so one of the things I'm doing over the course of this drawing, and you might, you might notice this at different stages, is I'm manipulating my values so that if there's a light value on the edge of a figure, I try and have a dark value in the background right next to that so that the light part, say, one of the jackets stands out. But equally, if I've got a very dark value on part of the figure, such as the jeans on the figure on the right, then I want to have a very light value next to that on the background so that the darkness, so that the, the, the legs, the jeans, stand out more. And sometimes just leaving the very faintest of, I think of them as halos, but white sections between the figure and the background can be helpful. And when I say very thin, I mean basically the thickness of the line that we're using or less. So very thin, the sort of line that does need to be done quite carefully. And I keep coming back and making adjustments around the figures as the overall values in the scene change. But at this point now, I'm doing the rough blocking out, as I think of it, for all of the background foliage, which was probably the part I was most hesitant about because it's the part where I'm going to most get confused and lose my way. So I decide that I'm not going to try and slavishly follow what's in the photo, except in broad ways. Instead, I'm going to look at the, the way the branches sit and put them in place as best I can. The biggest thing I'm trying to do is to get the scale correct. So it's not to draw these furthest branches too large because that will make the trees look smaller and the distance look closer. So some more adjustments around the figures. And now I'm looking at all the parts that don't have any line work on them yet and thinking, okay, am I going to be leaving these white paper or not? And I've decided that I will leave the pathway white paper just at the furthest point, but I do end up putting more value over the whole pathway later on, basically right up to the backs of the figures. But for now, I've come back to this foliage and the ground trying to draw it and, as I said before, keep a sense of, of separation that we can tell there are different, different things here, but we can't, we can't actually draw them. And this is where, this is an excellent example, as trees often are, of drawing the effect of what we see, not drawing what we see. We can't draw all these branches and uh, all, all these clumps of needles hanging off them. We have to look at the visual effect and not think about what it is, but simply to think, what am I seeing and how can I create the effect of what I'm seeing using my, my medium, which in this case is a black ink line, how can I create the effect? But besides in my mind being really, really the only credible or practical way to do it, it's also, I think, a very effective way to do it. And the same principles that I've used in the Australian bush were just as helpful here. And then as I start to get some individual sections done, some individual highlighted parts of, of branches going back and forth, again, I'm now pulling back a bit and thinking of the overall values of this, the overall lights and darks. Are my darks dark enough for what I want? And one thing I have done with this, I didn't use it as much as I thought I would, but one thing I did do with this was to also print off a black and white version of the same photo, the same size, which is just off camera. And that changes all the colors that we have here to black, 
well, to grayscale, I guess, really. And it makes it much easier to see without the distraction of color, what are the darks and what are the lights. And this is not because this is what I'm exactly going to do, but sometimes it's a very helpful starting point for my working out now, what am I going to do in my drawing? As you can see, I've switched back to a heavier pen to my 0 0.5 because I'm wanting to darken my dark areas now because I'm at the stage where I need to work out what values I want to use for the further parts of the forest. And so I need to get my darks as dark as I want them so that I can read that better. But I've decided that I still want it to be a bit darker. And now I think I'm finished and I pull off the tape, do what I think are the final adjustments and then think I'm finished. But in a moment, we will start again for the bit that I think really transforms it. Okay, so now I've got a very clear focus having looked at it for 15, 20 minutes and taken a photo of it um, and thinking, no, look, it's we just get lost in the, in the lighter values, I need some stronger mid-tones. Mid Often the problem with drawings are that we have too many mid-tones. But in this case, I thought I'd work so hard to get a contrast of very dark and very light that I actually hadn't established enough mid-tones to bridge the gap and also direct the eye. You'll see what I've done is I've created more value, more darkness for this right side curving of the forest floor to the right of the path and see how it now leads the eye from this darkest front corner up around past the figures. I also want to though balance it on the other side. So in effect I'm, I'm strengthening the framing, the darker framing and I'm taking it further into our scene. And I also darkened the, the footpath as well. But I decided that I also wanted to perhaps enclose the scene a little bit more at the top. So not really reflecting the reference as much, but I then add some darker values and create a couple of more branches just hang, hanging in down from what appears to be out of our frame, but it's simply the branches a bit higher than the branches I've had. So now I'm making some adjustments around the figures just to help them to stand out more, which I think worked well. And now I'm adding these darker values around the, the center section because I really want to create more of a sense of a ball of light coming at us from the far side of the forest. So I wanted to, to close in the lightest values with a little bit of darker value at the top, but not nearly as much as the value that I had established already, but some, something that's recognizably darker than those furthest in the distance white parts of the paper. And I obviously slowed this down, making some problem having... So here we have it. And I'm so much happier with this, with the, the extra eight minutes that I put into it. What do you think? Do you think I've improved it with, this, with the last eight minutes? Or did you prefer overall with a lighter effect? But I think visually it's, it much more grabs the eye and pulls us in with that curving dark value from the bottom right to the center. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. Look, if you found this helpful, please hit the like button. I'd love to have your comments on my first Swiss Alpine forest drawing. What do you think? And if you want to have a go, I'll post this reference photo on my channel community page. Look, it is a challenge, but this is how we learn. I've learned an awful lot doing this today. But look, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing it, whether you're learning or not, whether it works out or not, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.